Krishna. Nama Om Vishnu Padhaya Krishna Vishthaya Bhutale. E Mati Bhakti Varanta Swami Tinavi. Namaskari Parizati Tevi Gauravada Pachani. Viva Sesha Sanyavahari Pashti. Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Okay, Hare Krishna. So we are on chapter five, continuing. Let's just see how many verses in this chapter. I think it's 20. Eight. Quite good. So we've been discussing Bhagavad Gita for over 30 hours so far. <laughs> so probably the whole Bhagavad Gita would be a few hundred hours. Let's see. Wonderful. Let's yeah. Say it's wonderful. Okay, Hare Krishna. Um, before I forget, and I'll make this announcement at the end as well, um, these sessions which I've put up on my Zoom account, this is the last one, okay? So to save confusion, um, what happened last time, a few devotees got confused, and I think we lost a couple of devotees, actually, <laughs> because of it. So what I will do is I will just extend this link, which is already there. So you don't have to do anything. Okay? I will just extend it for another 10 or 15 sessions. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? So basically, you don't have to do anything. You'll get You go through the same link. All right, because yeah, we lost a couple of devotees actually last time, you know, easily done. You know? Okay, Hare Krishna. So we've set our basic system, should have properly. And um, just before we begin, how did everyone, how was everyone's day today? Did, it, did anyone get challenged with their minds being established in sameness and equanimity? No, <laughs> Chandrapal is nodding ahead. <laughs> yes, and I even got told off by my son. He said, "You are old, and you need to give these things up." <laughs> so there we go. There's plenty of opportunity for practicing Krishna consciousness in this material. Yeah. <laughs> and establish and save this with equanimity. Uh, so that was. Um, am I in the right words? We did. Um, we did 19 and uh, 18 and 19 yesterday so we're going to start on text 20 and i think this is text 20 here no 19 and finally in Muli Prabhu was it's devotees it wasn't even family or friends or anybody <laughs> that caused you problems <laughs> yes <laughs> Christmas anyway. okay so 520 let's have some devotees we have um a few love on here with us as usual. But anyone like to read 520? Shall I read um, man, yes, um please. Prabhu? Yes, you shall. <laughs> it has been ordained. Oh, thank you. Prapya Stira Buddhira Asmundo Brahma Vida Brahmani Stiti Ha Stita Ha Translation Prabhupada Prabhupada Kiji A person who neither rejoices upon achieving something pleasant nor laments upon obtaining something unpleasant, who is self intelligent, who is unbeliever and who knows the science of God is already situated in transcendence. The symptoms of the self-realized person are given here in 
The first symptom is that he is now illusioned by the false identification of the body with his true self. He knows perfectly well that it is, that it is not this body, but it is the fragmental portion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is therefore not joyful in achieving something, nor does he lament in losing anything which he related to this body. This steadiness of mind is called sthirabuddhi, or self-intelligence. He is therefore never believed by mistaking the gross body for the soul, nor does he accept the body of the permanent and in the disregard the existence of the soul. This knowledge elevates him to the station of knowing the complete science of the absolute truth, namely Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. He thus knows his constitutional position perfectly well, without falsely trying to become one with the Supreme in all respect. This is called Brahman realization or self-realization. Such a steady consciousness is called Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Hey, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Um, I'm just reflecting there, actually, that um, we're, we're quite fortunate because we have the association and we hear from from devotees who have been practicing spiritual life for many, many years, 40, 50 years, like uh, respected mm -hmm. spiritual masters and senior devotees. So you will see many of them will, will be exhibiting all of these qualities mentioned. Yeah, sameness, equanimity, self-intelligent, being being equipoised even in trying and difficult situations. There's one uh, devotee who comes to mind actually, just um, as a matter of fact, when I'm when we're reading this, and um, that's um, Krishna Setra Maharaj. Everyone knows just one example. We we could give many. Those of you who know him, I think a lot of you here do, or know of him. He he's always situated in joy always situated in abundant happiness and he has this air of air of aloofness perhaps is the wrong word but this air of detachment and peace yeah. and there's many other devotees the same as well so um we may not be on such a level but what we're being encouraged to do is make this a part of our sadhana to try and act according to these qualities here. Yeah, I just, you know, any immediate questions or comments on this over and above that little introduction? Um, I've got some notes here, which I was taking beforehand. I can share them. Um, All right, so one is here from, this is from Baladev Vijabhushana. Let's just, um, this is text 20, yeah? We just did text 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's look at Prabhupada's purple as well, of course. Prabhupada's purple will be based on the Acharya's purples, and you can see it. So one's intelligence is fixed in the Atma. So it's fixed in the soul. This is stira buddhi, rather than the body. Yeah. And I was also reading that the body is subject, it is material, so the body will be subject to the laws of this material world. Yeah. So, and the body is, is a result of our karma. But within the body, there is the steady, unchanging soul. So the more we, by using our intelligence, we can fix ourselves within, or fix ourselves within the soul. Does that make sense? Fix ourselves within the soul. <laughs> yeah. Now, I was based on here. Yeah, um, so he mentions, also mentioned that being bewildered 
arises from not identifying with the soul. Prabhupada mentions that here. The first symptoms that is not illusioned by the false identification with the body as the true self. So we have a gross body and a subtle body. So if we're not situated, if we're not inwardly, if our intelligence is not focused on what's on the Atma, and we're falsely identifying with the body, gross and subtle, then we're going to be in the dualities of joy, and lamentation, and all mm. the other emotions that come from material identification. Yeah. Yeah, um, Ramanuja says, agreeable or disagreeable situations occur in accordance to the physical body one happens to dwell in and the karma of past life actions. Right? So wow. agreeable and disagreeable situations occur in accordance to the physical body one happens to dwell in and the karma of past lives' actions. So it does us well to learn tolerance and to not be disturbed when these things are happening, which they will. Yeah. And he says, this, a person seeking to scale the heights of spiritual knowledge should practice or should be, should remain equipoised at all times. Not feeling elation or de or dejection. Yeah. How is this possible? And this is as such a person plants his mind and will. Okay, listen. This plants we have to learn to plant our mind and will in the stability of the soul. So we can always take shelter of the soul. We'll, which is us. We can always turn inward and take shelter of that constant, steady, unchanging nature within. Yeah. Then we can steady the material emotions and which we're going to face because of our karma. So we have to be, in that sense, the inward facing. Yeah. Again, such a person plants his mind and will in the stability of the soul. Yeah and not in the temporary, or not in the, or one shouldn't confuse the stable eternal Atma with the unstable temporary body. Right, there's a lot of little orphisms here, which uh, these are things we should meditate upon. Yeah, We don't just read, but it's something to stop. When we were young, we used to have this... Um, I don't know why I think you said this um, safety person come round to 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 teach to teach children about crossing a road. Anyone have that? Yeah, in those days, yes. The the a green cross code man, I think it was called, <laughs> and and the mantra was stop, look, listen. That was the mantra we had to learn. So again, so when we're in the mist which we are, because we have this body, which is a result of our karma. So there's all types of things going to be coming our way, both materially good and bad. But we have to kind of stop, <laughs> look and identify with that constant truth within, which is the soul. Yeah? That's why Prabhupada is saying it. He knows perfectly well he's not the body. But it's a fragment of portion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All right, we may not perfectly know as as yet, <laughs> but we can practice by looking inwards towards the soul. I think I've mentioned this before. There's there's accounts of persons who are in very distressful situations. But within that distressful situation, say um, I think Nelson Mandela described it and how persons are in, they're in, they they incarcerated, say by, you know, they incarcerated by the enemy. 
you know, and it could be facing death and in a very difficult situation. And there's no opportunity for sensual pleasure, not to an extended extent anyway, yeah, as a free person would have. So then one is left with the soul. And in sometimes in those situations, one discovers a peace and tranquility. Um, amazingly enough. And they come out of such situations with, with uh, wisdom and able to face the world with a sense of um, kind of gravity and realness, you know because of what they've experienced. It sounds strange because it means a very difficult situation to, to actually be in. And that's why it's described, actually going on to the next verse, but described, that's why it's important for us to learn to get pleasure, not from the sensual activities, but to get pleasure from within, within the realms of Krishna consciousness. Anyway, I'm going on a bit here. Anyone has any comments or questions on this? Or let me see. <clears throat> so um, I was... well, oh, sorry, you sorry, in? mother. First you. Go ahead. I gave you yeah, some. Go... Oh, see what? Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. I was thinking. So, basically, we have to come to a platform. Like always, thinking I'm not the body. So what am I? I'm soul. So if anything is it's coming good. your way, yeah. good, bad, anything's coming your way, mm. you then use that understanding. Exactly. If you say things yeah. to your body, I am not the body. It doesn't matter. It's going to finish. The body's yeah. going to finish. Yes. Is yes. it for the soul? Then, uh, you, then you act according to what your thinking is. So when you're thinking, I am soul, I'm not a body. Yeah. Then mm. your action would be you won't have duality, you won't have, you know. Mm. Yeah, you'll be exactly what these verses are are explaining. Yes. So the, the point which which for me that came out in these commentaries and Prabhupada's purple is especially is that the soul is the constant factor that mm. that we have, and we can always take shelter of that. We can always subdue the raging mind and meditate on the fact that we are soul. Yeah. And that will give us that will give us that will give us peace, you know. That will give us steadiness. Prabhupada said here, this steadiness is called stirda buddhi, self-intelligence. Yeah. Mm. It was never bewildered. But as I was reading here as well, it takes um, this also can be a sadhana, something that we practice. Because this is the symptom of a self realized soul. So we can hear those symptoms and we can practice them. But as we all know, it takes practice because the world is so be is so bewildering. Like yesterday, we studied Bhagavad Gita. Isn't it? We had a nice session reading Bhagavad Gita. And I was dressing the deities this morning, or dressing Gidi Kovadan. And I listened to Shima Bhagavatam class, you know, and I chanted my rounds. And then I was out today looking at marble, going to different marble workshops and, you know, interacting with the person selling the marble and driving around. And at some point, I completely realized I completely forgot anything about what I what I read yesterday, I was just gazing, you know, in the van, gazing at this, gazing at that, look at the adverts and, you know, and I realized to kind of get a hold of myself and look out and, and uh, remind myself that this is, that everything I'm looking at is just temporary. This is, this is the material world. It, it is not my home. <laughs> I had to bring it to mind, a sense of Krishna consciousness, because this world is so busy that it's easy to get distracted. Especially, there's one in one sense when we're looking at objects and things, but when it comes to dealing with people 
and um, and their emotions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then it, or even our emotions and their emotions, that's when it can be difficult to maintain this uh, steer the buddhi. You know. Anyway, nitai mata. Sorry. No trouble. No, I was just thinking. You said about marbles. I'm sure you are looking marbles for Krishna. You're yeah. not just the yeah. So yeah. why do you think uh, that way? Uh, oh, well, I'm just come back. Well, yeah, no doubt, definitely sure. I'm doing it for Krishna, but I'm just saying, hmm. he just by being in this world, there there is so many things you can be distracted. For instance, well, yeah. just, just like driving down the road, there's so many. Hmm shops offering so many it's different signs and different objects of the senses being offered and it's quite a uh what's the word it's quite a um circus of mm. of distraction so i had to call to mind you know i had to kind of i could feel okay let me remember that let me try and have some sense of krishna conscience and that and at that point i had picked up my beads and chanted Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare. Because normally I don't chant in a van or cars. I uh, I don't count them as rounds. But I thought anyway, I have to chant. Yeah. Uh, I I was thinking anyway, about sorry, uh, let someone let yeah yesterday yes yesterday's class mm. and today's what you are saying it is it is amazing. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to get into details. But uh, again, I remember Sutidama Prabhu says, we are very fortunate to have everyone around, all devotees around. And uh, But it can be very unfortunate if you really don't practice that. And uh, also at the same time, even in a uh, situation, as you say, uh, peace comes within. You can really understand. Uh, I was really thinking about it uh, last night. I was thinking Very just good. for my body. Yes, I was. This is for my body. This is happening. Uh, definitely. So my soul. I have to purify my soul, and that's why we chant. We are not chanting to purify our body. Yeah, and, also, we will be purified as well. But yeah, we're chanting to cleanse the mirror of the you know the dust of material illusion from the heart. Yeah. For sure. so, yeah. So I was thinking that way, okay? But at the same time, Prabhu, I want you to understand, yeah. uh, if something is happening, even even your situation, your, um, you don't know what mistake you are doing. And uh, But since to be okay, if, if something is happening, is it better that you come out of that situation? Uh, because sometimes some can uh, get upset for no fault of yours. Sometimes somebody can get upset for fault of yours. So until unless that is addressed, you don't know what is the reason. So and sometimes it is not worth knowing what is the reason because that's not going to do any good to yourself. Yeah, the example you can yeah, we have scripts to be able to recognize. Sometimes yeah. there will be given us that guidance from within the heart. Can anyone hmm. I can everyone say there's a good example of this where someone realized at some point, and it's in the Shema Bhagavatam, that this is the limit. I am I am leaving, I am out of here. And Papa, Vidura. Yeah, you got it. Vidura. Yeah. Straight away, yeah. Mm. Vidura. He was verbally abused by his brother. And mm. the was just trying to um, bring him to good sense to a uh, to to save them from total destruction. But at some point, Vidura realized, okay, I'm gone. <laughs> this mm. is time I'm out of here. I'm just gonna hit I, I I don't think he said it like that. I'm gone, man. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> but he put his bow up. You can see the picture of Bible time. He put his bow up and he just walked and he left. So there may be cases that there, there, there may be a situation like that. But that hmm. we should be very. That's why it's, we we can easily make a mistake as well, hmm. and wrongly drop leave a situation when really it wasn't the right thing to do. So it's good to think once, twice, thrice. Hmm. 
suppose Prabhupada said, before one made that, like that. But yeah, sometimes in this thing, sometimes situations are so, nothing's going to change and it may be so disturbing to your spiritual practice that it may be best just to avoid the situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but that's yeah. a good point. Thank um, you, Paul. Yeah. Anything else from anyone else out there? Finish reading here. Um, yeah, nothing in the external world will be, yeah, this is a good lesson we have, that nothing in this world can actually be perceived or then it will explain it better. Yeah, someone on this platform will never see the external world. Let me just read it. Nothing in the external world will ever again be perceived as being agreeable or disagreeable. It's all part of the material world. Nothing, there is nothing for the soul. There, there, there is nothing good for us to be had in this world. I think, and I think a verse, this verse comes up, is it the next chapter that describes for a self-realized person, they see a gold or stone as the same. You know that verse? You know, they may see gold, but that has, that gold is going to do, is, is not going to increase their spiritual sanctity or, or happiness. It has nothing to do with their actual spiritual life. Gold. So that's a, that such persons look as gold and stone as the same. I think these verses are coming up and it describes that. Also, one sees one's well-wisher, benefactors, friends, enemies, they see with the same eye. Yeah. Probably if I'm not mistaken, I don't know, maybe Labanga would uh, remember this because we are reading Bhagavatam. Sometimes in Bhagavatam somewhere, uh, gold is like stool. Gold is like? Stool. Stool. Hmm. Yellow stool. Because, <laughs> yeah. So, um, it, so in other words, it's something to be not um, aspired for by... Uh, by a transcendentalist, so that's quite a stark yeah. description of gold. I, I, was... I read it, I don't know, we were like, I remember getting, oh my god, look at that, literally, <laughs> so yeah. that's why I, mean, I remember. Yeah, that's another way, that's another adjective to describe that same sense of detachment, yeah. So, another comment here. Triumph over birth and death. So how are we going to cross this ocean of birth and death and attain Krishna? We have to come to the we we uh we have to come to the platform of being equipoised. Yeah. And oh, but there's a question for you in the chat. Yeah, so that's gonna qualify us to return or to obtain Krishna consciousness. So we have to practice this being equipoised in the dualities of this world. Um, Katharina asks, is it not where Kali allowed, is it not where Kali was allowed to reside by Maharaj Parikshit? Yeah, that's the other whole thread of discussion. Yeah, that's there in the Bhagavatam. You're speaking about um, Kali wanted to reside, yeah, where, so he gave him permission where there's, is it, was it? Um, yeah, gold. Gold is one of them. Yes, thank you for that, Kadina. All right, so living life immersed in the soul. That's another authorism that we could come up with. Living life immersed in the soul. So Prabhupada's purple, it's really wonderful because you read the commentaries of the chariots, Prabhupada sews them together really wonderfully, but he presents it in a very more understandable way for us today because reading Prabhupada's purple and reading the purples and explanations of the acharyas Prabhupada's just sewed it all together and given his own wonderful realizations as well mm -hmm. yeah all right anything else any any other gold we can get from here <laughs> there i say it yeah 
So anyway, we we get plenty of opportunities to practice these things. Yes. All right, let's read another verse. Text 21. Anybody out there like to read? Five, four. Can I go? One, just in time. I was just about to read myself. Go ahead. Oh, okay, Prabhu, then. That's no, all right. No, you go ahead. Okay. Vaya asakta ma vindate atmane yatsukam sabrahma yoga yuktatma sukam aksem asnate. Okay. Such a translation, such a liberated person is not attracted to material sense, pleasure, but is always in trance, enjoying the pleasure within. In this way, the self-realized person enjoys unlimited happiness, for he concentrates on the Supreme. Prabhu, can I read the Prabhu? Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Prabhu, can I read the Prabhu? Sri Yamunacharya, a great devotee in Krishna consciousness, said, Yadi Avedi Mama Chitta Krishna Pradharabindi Navanavarasa Dhammani Yudhyatam Rantam Asit Tad Avedi Bata Nari Sangame Smar Yamane Bhavati Mukha Vikara Susta Nishtiti Vanamta Okay, sorry. Since I have been engaged in the transcendental loving service of Krishna, realizing ever new pleasure in him, whenever I think of sex, pleasure, I spit at the thought, and my lips curl with this taste. A person in Brahma Yoga or Krishna consciousness is so absorbed in the loving service of the Lord that he loses his taste for material sense pleasure altogether. The highest pleasure uh, in terms of matter is sex pleasure. The whole world is moving under its spell and the materialist cannot work at all without this motivation. But a person engaged in Krishna consciousness can work with greater vigor without sex pleasure, which he avoids. That is a test in spiritual realization. Spiritual realization and sex pleasure uh, go ill together. A Krishna conscious person is not attracted to any kind of sense pleasure due to his being a liberated soul. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Right, so, uh, Hare Krishna. Any immediate questions here? Uh, I think I heard Srinipopa saying about the uh, uh um, about sex pleasure and uh, it is it is not uh, uh it is normal but how you use it if you uh, if you're using that uh, your you want to uh, your desire to have sex in the right way uh, to bring up Christian conscious children so you are uh, serving the lord in that yeah. so that's uh, so yeah, it's a good point to bring up. That's there in the Bhagavad Gita as well. Kalo, yeah, it's mentioned as one verse that Krishna says, I am sex life, which is not contrary to religious principles. So this is one of the reasons why in Krishna consciousness, those who take initiation, this is one of the vows that we take. There's no sex outside of marriage. And even that, as Mother Nitai Mato has explained, even Prabhupada gives gives direction within marriage it should be that in order to bring krishna conscious children into the world so that's why we make these vows of me why we make a particular vow and the particular vow no this sex is to allow us to experience the happiness within that's what's being mentioned here so we should not be attached to the happiness of sense objects now, if we live value, if we, if we live principled lives, 
based on uh, Krishna consciousness. And we, if we cannot give it up, at least we regulate it within the, say, group, within the Grihastha Ashram, then that will give us an opportunity to actually experience real happiness that comes from Krishna consciousness. That's why Prabhupada is saying here, this is a test. Spiritual realization and sex pleasure go ill together because the pleasure derived from sex is, is solely about the body, which we are not. The verse describes that pleasure is very temporary anyway, and it's very flickery, and it causes a lot of bondage. <laughs> a lot of bondage in that this is the main bind in this world. There's also a verse that describes um Pumsa Surinim Matini Bhavam describes that the attraction between male and female is a basic principle of material existence. So at least it should be, if it cannot be given up, it has to be, for someone who's interested in spiritual life, it should at least be regulated to enable us to tune in to the natural happiness of the soul. That's why Prabhupada had lots to say against so-called yoga societies or spiritual practitioners, which propagated um will basically propagate illicit or um, sex you know Prabhupada had it's just complete nonsense it's a complete um cheat it's complete cheating no one will get self-realized <laughs> anyway we get the idea Prabhupada was outspoken against so-called spiritual practitioners or gurus who would he would who wouldn't you know who wouldn't put any restrictions in in this regard. So anyway, so any other questions or comments here? Um, anyone know who Yamanuja Chari is? Anyone can say anything about him? Which makes this verse quite, it can, if you understand who he is or who he was, you can get the context of his saying this verse. He was a great king, Yamanuja Chari. So he had many wives and he had many opportunity then for sensual life and lived in a palace, etc. etc. But he became a devotee of Krishna. And this was his realization. Yeah, since I yet yet Mama Krishna Chaita part of So Chaita means the mind, Mama, Abhadi. So since I've been absorbed in Krishna consciousness. I'm experiencing Nava Nava Rasa, which means an unlimited taste, which is coming from my relationship with uh, Krishna. Yeah. Then Prabhupada would say, would pronounce this as he would fight at the fault. <laughs> because of the impressions from his previous life, obviously the, the impressions are in his subtle body and within his mind. Yeah, the uh, impressions and the memories of his previous sensual experiences. But when he would, but in, in comparison to the Krishna consciousness he's experiencing, there's another, another rasa. So therefore, he could just turn away from it. Even there's a, here, there's a sense of um, adversity. Yeah. But devotees are, eventually, they become above this platform of, of adversity and become naturally detached from it. But adversity in the beginning helps <laughs> to stay a bit steady on the path. <clears throat> yeah, Katarina, I, mean, I feel like his position towards sex is way too harsh. Yeah, because he's adverse. And it's probably good for him to be adverse because he's come from a very sensual background. So he's trying to, so he wants to put that behind him. So therefore, saying, I spite at the fault. <laughs> My lips curl with distaste. So he's, I think he's, he's reminding himself of the illusory happiness, which, um, which was there. So he's being, so he's speaking quite strongly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the happiness which comes within is permanent. Has anyone experienced um, 
any happiness in Krishna consciousness? Trouble? No, no. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> of course. Yes, of course. Everyone, yes, yes. We have. We've got some good news. That that's never going to go away. Never. It's never going to go away. You're 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 always going to have that within your heart. It's and it, and it's only going to increase. Yeah, it's not like material happiness. Yeah, it it is eternal. Yeah. And even if we even if in 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 Krishna consciousness, sometimes you know sometimes we experience in the kirtan or. Whenever we experience the bliss and the happiness, we may have a wonderful japa. And then what may happen is we may become forgetful of that. And we may become overwhelmed by the modes of material nature. But still that inner joy remains there, not far away. And it doesn't take much to actually tune into it again and to remember it. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we... Sometimes we're so conditioned to being in anxiety and so conditioned to being conditioned that even though we experience a blissful time in Krishna consciousness, like a blissful kirtan, as soon as we leave the kirtan, we, we again identify with our woes and our troubles and our hang-ups <laughs> because we're so used to it. So that, that's why we have to get as much bliss and happiness as possible so that we can always, you know, be in Krishna consciousness. Anyway, I'm going on a bit now here. Any other questions or comments on that? Yeah. It's something from Shrita Swami. Sparsha means the word is used here, Sparsha. One whose mind is unattached and is withdrawn internally ceases to crave yearn and desire for indulging the objects of the senses yeah so it should be that by chanting Hare krishna and engaging in krishna consciousness we can walk through the supermarket and and not have to fill up our trolley <laughs> you get the idea no, a strange example but we can go shopping and come back with nothing. <laughs> because there's nothing we need. There's nothing for us there. You know, we got our, you know, we got what we need. Because people without that, without Krishna consciousness, they have to buy so much stuff to try and make them happy. Eat so many different types of things to try and make themselves happy. Because they're not getting happiness from within. Zero. So they're, therefore, they get their they, their their only paradigm of happiness is the senses and the sense objects, you know. So and and to do that, they have to work like asses to get the money. Yeah, I was watching. Sorry, a bit of a distraction, but I was watching. There's someone um, in America. Excuse me. Sometimes I get distracted by the news, but in America, there is there's. Do you know this thing that happened in Black Lives Matter? You know, the whole protest when there was looting all the yes. in America? Well, now what's happened, even though there's no protests, uh, specifically gangs of 50 or up to 100 youths are just converging on shops and ransacking it like a bunch of wild animals, just going into the shop and grabbing what they can. You know, and there's cars waiting outside, about 80 of them are just descending on these shops, these high range shops. And the scene is like, for me, it just reminded me they're going through so much. There's so much desirous of getting this stuff. That they're they're acting like wild animals, mm. Literally, wild animals. And what they're doing it for is to get bags or coats. <laughs> anyway. And actually, um, it was also, it's, um, they're trying to do it in Oxford Street as well. Long I can't hear. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Mabla I can't hear anything. You can't hear anything. Can uh, anybody else hear me? 
Yes, we yeah. do. Okay, yeah. that's a relief. I've been chatting away for yeah. <laughs> four times. Anyway, so you can see that. So you can see the degree that people will go to in order to get the things of this world. They become like animals, you know. But so that's why when we're practicing Krishna consciousness, we we can we should be able to um, ap appreciate how we cannot be dependent on stuff and things, and you know, you get the idea. I hope. Yeah, I was just thinking about one thing, Prabhu. Even cooking without onion and garlic. And some people, how do you cook without onion and garlic? How it will mm -hmm. be like that? How possible? You know, so many questions. Even there's something sim so simple. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. if it's really a blessing, otherwise chopping there, you cry, your eyes tear. Yeah, it's yeah. very little thing. <laughs> yeah, so it comes down to a simple thing like that. It boils down to, you know, what we eat as well. Yeah. So, such a person attains a sublime and serene bliss, nature of the soul. So, never ending bliss, never, never rasa. Yeah. So, also, um, Jiva Goswami mentions, but also Ramanuja is mentioning here that we should learn to get our pleasure exclusively from our relationship with Krishna. Yeah. Exclusively. Mm -hmm our relationship to Krishna. Yeah. Rather than yeah, and we're going to get a lot more pleasure as well. A lot more higher quality happiness than we can from eating a whole packet of chocolate biscuits. <laughs> you know, for some shelter. You know, instead we chant a few extra rounds. Yeah. Yeah, and here if a person is inclined to attachment of sensual pleasure, they will never have the opportunity to experience transcendental bliss. So again, that's why Prabhupada gave us the regular principles. We have to live a controlled lives to get to to tap in to the happiness that is within. Yeah. If a person is inclined to attachment of sensual pleasure, they will never have the opportunity to experience transcendental bliss. Then there's a question here. What happiness can a person derive from life if they have introverted the senses or they're averted from sense objects? So what pleasure? Well, sukham akshayam, the word is used here. Shukam akshayam, was it here? Shukam akshayam, yeah, which means shukam akshayam means well, whether they get they get unlimited happiness. Yeah. Happiness from sex is limited. Yeah, even uh, there's verse in the Bhagavatam that describes that it, well, it, that what the cockroach experiences, you know, I won't go into too many details, but what the animal experiences is the same as what the, um, there's a verse that the, um, um, describes that in the human form of life is especially meant for Krishna consciousness. After all, even, you know, Happiness from the senses is 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 available to even the lowest forms of life, but Krishna consciousness happiness is only available in the, in the human form of life. Yeah. yeah so it's actually, contentment. It's contentment. Yeah, unlimited happiness. <clears throat> yeah. So that's why it's good for us to associate together and to to uh, remind us of these principles because. Everything else, every the whole material world is trying to convince us that we can only be happy if our senses meet the sense objects. We can expand, yeah, if we can buy things. And <laughs> the business, was it one president said of America that the business of America is business? <laughs> so, yeah, because there's lots of propaganda. You just walk down the high street, there's so much trying to tell you you need to so many different types of things you can or watch even so many things you can watch or hear or you know you get the idea so we instead we associate with each other and we hear and chant about krishna yes anything else out there Hare krishna 
food for thought. I hope we can think over these things that's come out here in Bhagavad Gita. Let's go to 522. Now, this is a more well-known verse. Um, this is another verse that devotees learn. Okay, Mabaga, you can go ahead and read. It's 522. Is that a hand for reading? I presume it is. Um, yes, I'll read. Translation. An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. Pepper. Material sense pleasures are due to the contact of the material senses, which are all temporary because the body itself is temporary. A liberated soul is not interested in anything which is temporary. Knowing well the joys of transcendental pleasures, how can a liberated soul agree to enjoy a false pleasure? In the Padma Purana, it is said, Ramande yogi nonante satyanande chit atmani the mystics derive unlimited transcendental pleasures from the absolute truth, and therefore the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, is also known as Rama. In the Srimad Bhagavatam also, 551, it is said, Nayam deho deha bhajam nrloke kashtan kaman arhate vid my dear sons, there is no reason to labor very hard for sense pleasure while in this human form of life. Such pleasures are available to the stool eaters, hogs. Rather, you should undergo penances in this life by which your existence will be purified. And as a result, you will be able to enjoy unlimited transcendental bliss. Mm. Therefore, those who are true yogis or learned transcendentalists are not attracted by sense pleasures, which are the causes of continuous material existence. The more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he is entrapped by material misery. Mm. Okay, very good. Right, so any... Uh... Questions here or comments? I was referring to this verse uh, just now, actually. Nayam deho deha pajam naloke. One thing to note here is that the, that the experience of transcendental bliss, we have to be patient. Because we may not experience it in the immediate of taking up Krishna consciousness. And it may not be a minute-to-minute -minute experience. Yeah. So that's why we're encouraged to hear, like I'm just reading here, that we sh it's good to hear about the miseries of material existence and, and the results that come from sensual attraction, that it leads to misery. So... Transplant, yeah. So we have to be patient, yeah, because it's the high, yeah. It's the, the point I'm making here is not like the so-called happiness for material objects can be quietly, readily grabbed. You understand? And a simple example: if you're desiring a bar of chocolate, you just go and buy one and eat it, and you experience some so-called, you know, you know, you you feel some sense of, oh, I'm eating a bar of chocolate. But if you want to taste uh, bhava or prema, you're going to have to, <laughs> it's not going to, it's not just, you know, you can't just walk into a temple and say, can I have a, can I have a bar of <laughs> prema? <laughs> can I have bhava by, um, by next week, please? <laughs> it doesn't work like that, you know. But still, Krishna is very kind. And if we engage in the path, then Krishna will will encourage us from from within, even before getting into these higher stages, you know. 
that's why Rupa Goswami says as well that we have to be patient. We have to be very enthusiastic, at the same time patient. Utsaham nishtayat thayat tatakama pravatanat. Yeah. Very enthusiastic, but it should be tempered by patience as well. But it's to, it's worthwhile. Yeah. It's worth putting in some austerity. It's worth controlling the self. And it's glorious, actually, if one takes to spiritual life. It's a glorious thing you can do. The best thing we can do with our lives, you know. Any other comments yet? Let me just peek at the next verse. Uh, um, Papa, sorry to say this. Uh, sorry to uh, say this again. Uh, no need to whenever problem. you speak to a Srila Prabhupada disciple, they yeah. will always talk about these two things, what we mentioned. They will say enthusiasm <laughs> and patience. Patience, patience. I uh, Many times I heard that personally also. Only these two, they talk. Yeah, because that's their realization. That's how they yeah. managed to practice Krishna consciousness for many, many years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how to be enthusiastic? One time, um, someone I was watching a book distribution seminar given by uh, by Sheshika, and he was asked his question: How to be enthusiastic in spiritual life? He said, "Well, I want to tell you a secret." He said, "Just below, at the back of your head, just below your seeker, there's a switch, and if you press it, you'll be enthusiastic." What does he mean there? Anyone can say what he means? It means you can choose to be enthusiastic whenever you want. You can just choose to be. You can be in the kirtan and you can think, oh, I don't like this thing. I, you know, I can't wait till the kirtan ends. <laughs> Maybe. Sometimes it may be like that. But we can know I'm going to be enthusiastic in this kid time. I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to move my feet. I'm going to put my arms in there. I'm choosing to be enthusiastic. You can choose to be. Yeah. Of course, the choice may be difficult if you've you're not if you're not being engaged in Krishna consciousness uh, sadhana. But no, we can always choose. You can you can choose to chant en enthusiastic rounds. You can choose. You have got complete independence. You can choose to enthusiastically make garlands, you can choose. You can choose to be not enthusiastic as well. It is your choice. Yeah. Oh, for chanting, you can be enthusiastic, but maintaining is a, is a difficulty, you know, Bo? Yeah, so that's why, yeah, that's why we have to associate with devotees, you know, mm. as much as we can, like probably many of you might do japa online with other devotees, you know. Mm. So it's always good. You know, when you're sitting down in a temple room, okay, it's because I've experienced it because I live yeah. in a school. Mm. You, could, you know, you may not be so viewers like then some then 80% of everyone else is and is enthusiastic. And of course, there's a small percentage who are sleeping, as always. <laughs> <laughs> <In their job>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's why we good to associate with devotees who are who are in enthusiastic or enthusiastic yeah. but at the same time it's interesting we have to be enthusiastic at the same time patient yeah. knowing that this is uh, not a cheap thing Krishna consciousness it's not like buying something over a counter we have to be real patient yeah. all right we did three verses today great mm -hmm. we're doing two at the moment three verses so nice, isn't it? Every chapter that we read, there's so much, isn't it? Every verse, yeah. like the jewel. So wonderful to spend time looking at each verse and trying to understand it more. So this is quite a good course we're doing on Bhagavad Gita. I wish mm -hmm. I could issue um issue what's called um back to Sastri certificate at the end of this, if our core team stay for the I say we'll be doing well if the whole core team, if everyone here stays to chapter 18, it would be a great achievement, you know? It'd be a great achievement. Mm 
Go and chat the mm -hmm. fire at the moment. So that'd be good because they can put it on their um forms for their second initiation. <laughs> yeah, That's okay. a good yeah. <laughs> because of the commentary is it's more interesting, Prabhu, isn't it, Prabhu? Yeah, the purples. Um, purples, purples. Yeah, well, purples, purples. That's why it's so wonderful. Purples, purples are based on the commentaries and the way he ties them together. It's really oh. wonderful. And then he gives his own uh, contextual preaching for the modern times. You know, like for mm -hmm. instance, Prabhupad here. Do you know this verse? This verse here. Yet, yet, Avadi Mama Krishna Chaita part of Indai. Now, this. Papa is speaking about sex life. This is not in any of the commentaries of the Acharyas. To uh, this, so at least there might be, you know, I, actually, I don't have all the commentaries. I've got about six I'm using. <clears throat> but um, none of them speak about it. Only Papa speaks about specifically sex life. Why is he speaking about it? Because he knows Western people are enamored and crazed by it. You know, he's preaching in San Francisco and in New York, where, you know, completely in the Western culture, there is no restriction and people are completely mad for sex life. So Prabhupada then speaks about sex life here. But none of the average areas do. Yeah, this, Prabhupada, <laughs> this is Prabhupada's um, realized preaching strategy. You've got to tell these people in the West, actually, that, you know, <clears throat> Is he speaks about it, you know? For example, it's interesting. All right, let's pause there, shall we? And please join us next week, and we and we we'll continue with uh, chapter five. And I wish you a wonderful Krishna conscious weekend. There's a big um, events going on at Bhaktivedanta Manor. They have their 50th anniversary. I'm sure we might see devotees there. I might see you there. Lots of events happening. So Hare Krishna. I hope you can attend some of it. Okay. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare.